Meshtastic is radio tech that lets you communicate entirely off-grid with cheap little devices like these. During weather emergencies, when the grid is down, when cell towers are down, these little devices can still mesh together and let people communicate with no infrastructure at all. Could they help after something like Hurricane Helene or Milton? Maybe. Ham radio nets certainly proved their worth, but to use them, you have to have a license. Meshtastic doesn't require licensing, though. It uses LoRa, short for long range, and lets you send short text messages over pretty long distances. It uses tiny low power radios, so it's easy to run these off battery or even solar panels. My dad and I have been meshing with Meshtastic for a few months now, and we have some opinions. <laughs> If mm -hmm. you could summarize your experience so far in one word, Dad, what would that word be? Uh, beta. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> beta. We'll get to that. So here at the office, I have a Helltech V3. This is one radio that a lot of people getting into Meshtastic start with. And it's been sitting on my workbench for a couple months now, and I think I've gotten one or two organic contacts through it. Mostly it's just a way for me to have a radio here that I can make sure that my other radios are working with. Um, at home, I'm using this H1 radio from MuziWorks. It's also a Helltech V3 inside of a nice little case with a battery and antenna. Um, and that's actually been able to reach a few people around the neighborhood, which is interesting. I also use this R1 in my car, and it's a whiz block, so it's a different type of radio. Uh, an interesting thing for me was I found that there's a lot of differences with how they communicate with your phone, and I'll get to those later. And then finally, I bought this T deck, which I will also talk about a little bit more in depth later in this video. And you? Oh, I have this one, which I believe is an H1. And the poor guy had to hang out with me in my car and on my drone. <laughs> and we, before so. we started recording this video, we, I, I noticed that there was a gap in the top, yeah. and I was like, that is not normal. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll show a little bit of the footage on the screen here, but we quickly removed the spicy pillow that was mm -hmm. inside. Yes. Uh, one, I guess one learning is don't run a node with a battery in it uh, in your car on a super hot day and mm -hmm. drive a long distance and charge it up 100% because mm -hmm. the battery might not like that. Mm -hmm. So that's true. <laughs> Things that we learned uh, when, you're, when you're playing around with these. Also, I remember you brought this over to the studio a few weeks back and you mm -hmm. put it on, you, you'd like, I don't know, you tied it to the drone or something. It was it's hanging down, you threw it up yeah. and, uh, and then you did it again. Can you tell me about that process? Well, one thing is the drone could lift it, so it was nice and light, so that was kind of cool. So, and I assume the guys use balloons, uh, too, they have a Weather balloons. event there. But uh, I was, you know, with the drone, I could take it up hundreds of feet. Why would that matter? Well, this uh, little 900 megahertz transmission is, line of sight is great. Uh, I mean, I, I um, you definitely want to get line of sight and clean. So all the trees, you want to get over as many as you can, and you'll have a stronger signal and get farther uh, reception, which is what we found, right? Yeah, so. well, here, when you flew it up, I remember I had the node here in the studio and the one in my car and one at home, and we could connect between the two. Right mm -hmm. now, I can't because there's a hill between us. It's mm -hmm. like a mile away or something. But you also flew it up at the radio studio. What happened there? Because yeah, I, that, that... I tried to communicate with you, but my <laughs> phone, I had just gotten a new phone, and yeah. I couldn't, I didn't get the phone yeah. call. That was a 45% valid testing, I guess, but uh, I did. I flew it at the studio, and I went up uh, 200 feet to see if we could get it. We couldn't, and I went up 500 feet. I took some video of that, too, so, like, you can see the difference yeah. of looking downtown uh, from here, uh, the two. And, and then you can see a lot more rooftops when you go up 200 feet and a lot more when you go. Uh, but what a great way a drone is, even if you were looking for locations for your Meshtastic net, you could look and see visually really quickly uh, from a location where you are so but did you get any more reach with I, I did I, I got a couple of people I, I latched onto a couple down there on Hampton <laughs> a restaurant that maybe we can find out I think it's a restaurant <laughs> I did latch on got a couple more that way and as I drive like I said on these trips I leave it in the on my dashboard I'm up to like 31 nodes Contact I've connected from to, driving around the city which you like three or four here and yeah. uh, your friend in the neighborhood I got those that's five yeah. of them but still yeah, most, most people that do <clears throat> much testic end up with like three to five nodes anyway yes and I had the uh, I had the guy on the airplane, whoever you are, I, I got your thing too. 32,000 feet? Yeah, yeah. I, I got that too for here, you? so that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and, but we couldn't, we couldn't reach the office from there. That was the main goal is we wanted to see yes. if we could hit uh, yeah. between our two buildings, which are probably three or four miles away, something yes. like that. Yeah. The, but the problem is we might have connected. The problem, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't talking to him on the phone mm -hmm. because of the communication problems. Right. The node list showed that it had connected, but I couldn't tell if it was like then or the day before when mm -hmm. we were close by each other. So mm -hmm. uh, that's that's something else that we'll get into. But those tests were all done with these little guys. Uh, well, but another another thing I found is if the I had to get in long enough uh, 
cable oh. to stay away from the drone. Yeah, that, you, so. you did mention there was some interference. Well, at first I thought it'd be cool. I would put some stick them on the bottom here, put a cable through here, keep it tight to the drone and fly up and it would be stable instead of kind of dangling. Yeah, because you know? the antenna's moving around. And, uh, and I thought that'd be cool, but I got the uh, warnings from the drone software. So that was with these guys, because they're a little smaller, they'll fit on the drone. Uh, but this one is the uh, the T-Deck. And they actually, LilyGo is making a new version of this because it's been very popular, the T-Deck Plus, that's all pre-built. This is one I bought the kit, I bought the, like the basic part of it, and then I 3D printed a case. I put in a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, I put on this antenna, and uh, flashed some custom firmware to it. This one is interesting to me because like when I'm thinking of Meshtastic, when I first heard about it, it's off-grid communications. Mm -hmm. When someone told me, okay, so connect your phone to this, I'm like, that doesn't sound off-grid. <laughs> and a lot of times when we post about it, people are like, well, why is it off-grid if you're using a phone? Yeah. Like, that's not off-grid. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, when you start explaining that, you know, it's a local Wi-Fi connection or a mm -hmm. local Bluetooth connection or serial mm -hmm. or whatever, the people, yeah. their eyes glaze over. Mm -hmm. That's not off-grid to them. So mm -hmm. this is the first thing that I was like, this is actually off-grid. I can go mm -hmm. in here, go to my chats and, and type in a message and send it. And I can get messages. And this, this has no cell service. It doesn't need any Wi-Fi. It doesn't need any internet connection, nothing. And if, if, to, if I had one and you had one and we were within, within the eyesight of each mm -hmm. other, we mm -hmm. would be able to communicate. You know what I thought when I saw that? What? I need a bigger drone. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think BlackBerry when they see this because that's yeah. obviously the inspiration for this. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to post a little video about that device to my Level 2 Jeff channel. Uh, but I did want to mention that because especially, you know, if you've already commented, like, you can't send messages on these. They're not real off-grid. It's like, you can. But, mm -hmm. uh, but there are some concerns with the, the software setup for this, and, and I'll talk about those in my video. Yeah, and these do get, uh, you can't see the message, but... Yes, it, if it's unless located, you read messages. It's like a pager. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to remote the antenna and keep the message where you want it. So yeah. a lot of things to think about. And you mentioned that, that the word beta was what you'd summarize. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we both agree on that. There's mm -hmm. in the app, on the iOS app, there's some a lot of little software quirks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, if a node is connected recently or never. Mm -hmm. um, I even notice like timing on these devices when I go in, it says like no time ago or whatever when you mm -hmm. start it up. And right. so they, they don't have a clock in them basically. So that can be confusing. Yeah. Uh, messages get dropped a lot of times and you're mm -hmm. like, I don't know. You know, yeah. I, 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 even earlier today, I think I sent a message through my phone through this one and it showed up on the one on my desk, but it didn't show up on here. And then later it was showing up on here, not on the one on my desk. So it could be firmware issues. It could be radio issues. Mm -hmm. Who knows? It, it, it's interesting because you, you, know, you think about how these messages are moving around and they store and forward or they forward and that's it, that kind of world. Uh, there's nuances in that with these things that you know we haven't explored too deeply yet, but that that makes a huge difference on whether my drone needs to be up in the air for five minutes or 25 minutes, you yeah. know, to make uh, communications happy. Yeah, I, I think if if you had a stable node somewhere up high, that would be ideal. Yes, and, it would. Uh, for a and, lot of guys, if they have a ham set up already, you might have a mast somewhere you could put one. Right, on. somebody has a 75 foot uh, thing in their backyard. Put the put the mesh tastic unit on there. Keep it out of the sun, put a sunshade thing. Like <laughs> Don't have a big lithium ion battery in it. <laughs> the other thing that was interesting, the, one of the first things I did was like, I want my node on the map. And then as I was doing that, I realized if I do that, people will know exactly where I am. Yes, yeah. So there's some settings in there. If you use yeah. GPS or attach it to your phone's GPS to like say, like give it a range instead mm -hmm. of saying exactly where I am. Uh, but mm -hmm. that was an issue. Uh, some people were accidentally doxing themselves mm -hmm. when they joined Meshtastic. So I think the defaults are changing a little bit with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the idea of privacy, like end-to-end -end encryption. Don't assume anything you say is private on these mm -hmm. because yeah, the packets are being transmitted through the air mm -hmm. and it, these devices probably aren't doing like quantum grade no. encryption on yeah. them. No. But you know th that is something that people have been working on and, and mm -hmm. seeing. But on the flip side, it's like for a free over-the-air network that's not licensed, it's mm -hmm. nice to not have too much encryption anyway. Right, right. I think it has, there is a place for that too, especially in emergency communications are, you know, the people who are going into more dangerous mountainous areas to hike and play, to keep track of each other. There's, there's a lot of good things. We've got radios for those too. Another thing that I, I noticed, like a lot of people 
especially early on in the YouTube uh, videos that I was watching about Meshtastic, the idea was like, this is magic, it's amazing. I think some people like live up on a hill and yeah. it is kind of magic for them. <laughs> I live in a very hilly part of St. Louis and it's not really magic like other things. You need height and you need a good clear signal mm -hmm. and uh, you're not going to get those two things in a lot of urban environments. So you right. need more density and you need more people to coordinate. Yeah. yeah, and that's a limit we didn't get to test. It would be kind of fun to figure out how to test the... Uh, at what point does the, the uh, system become overloaded? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, they they did do that mm -hmm. at Open Source this mm -hmm. year, and it'd be cool if we can all go next year. I'm sure this year I think they had a hundred and something nodes next year with all the people who found out about Mesh Testing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure yeah. there'll be like 500 nodes. That yeah. would be a good uh, stress test of yeah. the system for sure. Another concern besides kind of the beta thing of it is there's a huge. Uh, delta between like the good LoRa radios and the bad ones or the ones that are more featureful or less like these use the V3 and you and I have both noticed like the Bluetooth range what, what do you get it's, usually? It's uh, 20 feet if I'm lucky some <laughs> it's, it's very short and then when the drone goes up that was frustrating because you can't yeah. send a message to you or receive it uh, while it's up there it comes down and there is a little screen in there has a kind of clumsy way to click around and you yeah. see the you, you can, can see a message on there. Things. So, uh, but it, it is, uh, it's disappointing as a Bluetooth device yeah. for sure. Now, on the flip side, you have not used this. I have not the, used uh, it. The, the WizBlock uh, one from Rec, I think, Rec Wireless. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bluetooth on here, I can get usually 20 to 40 feet. Much, much yeah, better. Yeah. So I, I that's think reasonable. that that's, but it, it's a hard thing because a lot of people beginning with Mesh Tastic will buy one of these cheaper V3 models mm -hmm. because they're cheaper and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lower cost of entry, which is great, mm -hmm. uh, but that can be frustrating. It's kind of like when I started with ham radio, uh, mm -hmm. I bought this, the, the Baofeng UV5R. It's like mm -hmm. the, the cheapest way of entering into handheld uh, ham radio. But after using it a lot, communicating with you, communicating with a couple other people in St. Louis, I realized... I, I basically have to hold down squelch the whole time uh, because <laughs> yeah. I, I, it won't pick anything up. It's, yeah. it's not very selective with uh, its reception. Mm -hmm. So then I bought the Quanxing, and uh, it was a little bit better, but also a little bit worse. Uh, but it might be fun to hack on it. But if you really want to communicate, you buy a good radio. So mm -hmm. I, I bought the same one you have, the Selectivity, Yezu, the, uh, what, sensitivity. What the FT65. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the Meshtastic, I've noticed. Like Some of them are a little bit better. Some mm -hmm. of them are a little bit worse. Uh, the antennas, um, you know, an antennas are, eh, you know, y you have some thoughts on that. I, well, I do like antennas alone, like the whole subject of antennas, and all of our ham friends know what I'm talking about. You could experiment your life away with antennas if you have enough little toys. Uh, but these, you know, at uh, 900 megs, you need to figure out, like, when you need a directional antenna or not. These are obviously not directional. Uh, so if you uh, figure it out, even just, like, if you have a power of one and it's spread out as opposed to directly aimed, you're going to get a lot more in that direction. So so when to use directional, not directional, when a, a quarter wave, half wave, you know, because part of it is like you want to throw it in your pocket or not. You want to have a drink. So all of those things come into the the play just with the antennas, not, not to mention the receiver's ability to be selective and how low a signal it can yeah. get and still decode. Could so. that be a topic for a future video? Uh, could be a topic for a future video. Yep. That'd be fun. Yep. Bring our bending tools and wire and cutters. <laughs> and the nano VSR and all yeah, those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, make sure you're subscribed for that. And uh, and on that topic of antennas and the, the actual radios, you know, a lot of times I say RF is magic. It's black magic to me. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, physics is physics mm -hmm. also. And, and you can measure these things. You can test them. One thing that I think a lot of people in early on were like, oh, the range is going to be unbelievable with, with LoRa. And it is. It's, it's kind of amazing the way that the radio works can use the same frequency that we used to use on the phone mm -hmm. in our house. Mm -hmm. And instead of being 20 feet away, you could be like a mile away. Mm -hmm. That's cool. But the 900 megahertz it's, band has some downsides, too. Yeah, it's a small uh, wavelength and it can be blocked easily. Uh, it gets, you know, the, they talk about the fade margin. So when you have different conditions like rain, mist or whatever, you, you're going to have a, a reduction in the signal because how much of it can be absorbed. And this, the higher the wavelength, the shorter, the, uh, the higher the frequency, the smaller the wave and the more that you get natural obstruction. So a leaf looks like a giant thing at 900 megahertz and it looks like nothing at one megahertz, you know. So uh, those are those are kind of the, the battles you're going to have at 900 megahertz, why you want to have like as high as possible repeater or something set up to get that. Uh, kind of the ham guys do that too, yeah. get those repeators up high. And, yeah, well, I mean, that's the hard thing too because 
And the camera operators often have networks of like, they know a radio engineer, they know mm -hmm. a tower operator, mm -hmm. or they know how to build their own tower in their backyard and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's a difficult thing that I think Meshtastic, to be more successful in an urban environment, has to overcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gotta get nodes up high. Yep. And uh, so far, like in St. Louis, out of the city, there's a few that are high up, but mm -hmm. in the city, we still don't have one of the buildings. Any. We'd have found it, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, now a couple of the last couple I got when I was up high on the drone, either they might be we, we like don't on have the, on the top of a two or four yeah, story building. We don't have, and I'm confused whether I can get information from someone if I don't have my GPS on, because <laughs> it seems like ever since I turned that connection off, I'm not getting any location information from uh, from the new add-on units. So. You know, ham radio requires a license, and even I, I think radio engineers used to do some sort of FCC licensing. Mm -hmm. And the the point of that wasn't as much to gatekeep the community, but it was more to say like this is a a resource that we have that can be mm -hmm. abused. Mm -hmm. And so if you license people, they'll know ways to not abuse it. Right. And there's a system in place to correct that abuse. Mm -hmm. With Meshtastic, the uh, we've already had. I, I think one time I got some somebody was spamming out a URL to something and. It's like, it probably was an innocent thing, like just, mm -hmm. hey, I set up the script to do this. Yeah. But uh, we really haven't had to deal with when actual spammers get onto the mesh. When it's when it gets overloaded you know? or even loaded up a lot. Yeah. You know, it's like the old baby monitors used to come through your cell phone. It's not, you know, the uh, cordless yeah. phones. So uh, there's, there's a lot. I mean, it's a set of frequencies. They're all, every frequency that uh, the FCC controls has uh, limits on what you can transmit or how you can transmit, how you can modulate. And uh, but an experimental frequency like this is uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see what goes on. Uh, Mesh Tastic's not the only one that has the right to be in there. Uh, that again, that's why when you're up higher than the next guy, you're going to get farther. <laughs> you're going to get more radios. But yeah. uh, even a, even directionalization from the hand, if you knew where your repeaters were, mm -hmm. if you could get that extra gain at 900 megahertz, it would make a big difference. Yeah. So. And you mentioned it hasn't really been tested to the extreme, but. Um, we were also wondering, you know, seeing that the hurricanes that came through, even the, yeah. the G4 magnetic storm that came through this week, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things where it's like, uh, if, if there is something crazy that happens, you don't have to be licensed, so you could give one of these to everyone you know. Mm -hmm. Like, say, like, this should be in your emergency kit. If you give them a radio, technically you could use it under emergency conditions mm -hmm. uh, if you're not licensed. But that is, it's just a nice thing, and, and people might be more familiar with the texting interface rather yeah. than... The etiquette of using radio, but well, you know, a, a hurricane. You know, we just had the hurricanes uh, recently, and there was an engineer who was talking about. It. He saw some cell towers that were like half bent over. Uh, some of them were just out. I think I heard today, fifteen percent of the cell towers in a lot of those areas were out. Um, but yeah, so your mesh-tastic world would go up after that, right? So mm -hmm. you would not be out, and uh, and you'd you'd have your communication going. So it's it's just interesting to see what devices are available, what people might do. Uh, especially in the case of a hurricane. Yeah, I know, uh, just doing a little research on the hurricane response too, I saw Augustana College or something, it's in Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a student group that was building meshtastic nodes. And the idea there was, you know, can, can we build these things and learn how to help people communicate in a mm -hmm. disaster zone? Mm -hmm. And uh, in Asheville, I, on, on their subreddit, I saw a few people were actually mm -hmm. building and passing out nodes to other people. So yeah. it, it is an interesting thing. Yep. I don't think we know yet how much mesh ta Meshtastic might have helped or, or not mm -hmm. helped. But it is, I mean, that's, that's why I think it should exist. Yeah, and a lot of these disasters, the next day is a gorgeous day. Yeah. So it's not like the weather's going to be a problem again. So, yeah. yeah. A, Sometimes not. <laughs> Sometimes. So have you heard of Meshtastic? And are you on the mesh? Let us know in the comments, and we'll see you next time.